So for starters, what exactly is a mail-enabled contact? Well, there are times when you have a person that needs an email address within your company and you can create a mail contact right here. You can actually see it, new mail contact. This will create an Active Directory object with full information about the person, but the person will not be able to access internal resources. In other words, they won't be able to log on and access various files and folders and so forth. Now you're going to find that that's different from a new mail user, which we'll discuss in the next clip. And the difference is that a new mail user actually can access resources if they're given permission to. In both cases, however, a new mail contact and new mail user, both of them will be shown in the global address list. Both of them have external email addresses. And both of them usually involve users that do not work within your company walls. So that's why you're creating something different from a mailbox. You're actually going to link the new mail contact and the new mail user off to external email accounts. So in this clip, we're going to create a new mail contact. And here we have the new mail contact wizard. We're asked if we want to create a mail contact for a new contact or an existing contact. We'll stick with the new contact for now. And you notice that for starters, it's going to put the contact object in the user's container, but we can select browse and we can put it in an organizational unit or wherever else we would like. As far as the contact name, we'll just call it contact one. And then it asks us for an external email address. We click edit and we can provide the address here. and say OK. Now you notice it's an SMTP address. If we click the down arrow over here, see it's kind of hard to see, so it's important to notice that little down arrow. We can select that, and then we can change it to a custom address. In this case, we can supply a different email type, whether it's an X400, a GroupWise, or a Lotus Notes address. We can include the email type here and include a different email address. We click Next and we can review the configuration summary and click new and so we're completed we click finish and you'll note that the little icon again is different for a new contact than it is for an equipment resource or a room resource or a standard mailbox so it's easy to see the difference what we should see however is this object in active directory if we click start go to administrative tools and then to Active Directory Users and Computers. And here we have Contact 1, but notice it's a contact, so this individual would not be able to log on with this account because it doesn't have account logon information and it has no password. If we go to the Properties, it does have some basic properties that we can fill in, the address, telephones, organization, and so forth. The same information can be filled in from the Exchange Management Console, if we double click on the user, pretty much the same information, contact information, address and phone. And if we type it here, it's included for the object that's in Active Directory users and computers. But there are a couple of extra tabs here, like email addresses and mail flow settings. So we have a little bit more control over the contact as far as how it interacts with Exchange through the Exchange Management Console. So I hope you found that informative. And I'll see you in the next lesson.